you will, we read this last uh, last week, and we or, or Wednesday night, I believe, and then uh, this these next two chapters follow the last vial of uh, that is the, the the seventh vial that is poured out in chapter number sixteen. We read of that seventh vial that is poured out in chapter number sixteen and verse number seventeen, and the angel uh, poured out his vial into into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. So that vial is poured out, and then these things that take place uh, gives us what takes place after this. They're not consecutive, but this takes place after this uh, seventh vial is poured out. Now, it deals with Babylon. It deals with the fall of Babylon. And uh, this can get a little complicated, but if we just take the... Uh, word of God for what it is and compare scripture to scripture and forget what uh, people may have conjured up, then I think we can understand this uh, as the Lord wants us to understand it. Now, the, the fall of Babylon was first announced over in chapter number 14. In chapter number 14, and I just read it, chapter number 14, uh, verse number 8, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now Babylon is that, we, we, if you remember Wednesday night, Babylon has always has existed since the time of Babel. That, that, uh, that organization or non-organization, however you want to call it, of, of people that have always tried to get to God. Now that's what... They tried to do at, at the Tower of Babel. They wanted to elevate themselves to where God was at. And so uh, they tried to build a tower, and God saw what was happening. They wanted to elevate themselves with God. Now, that has always taken place. There has always been those that, that uh, put something on the same plane with God. You can go to any country. Uh, you can go to any place in the world. Maybe they tell me there's tribes of uh, people in the world that have never been discovered, that, that people don't even know they exist because they say they're finding them. But you, everywhere they go, there is, there is built into man, into their heart, there is built part of them to worship something. And so they find things, idols that they are worshiping, even in the deepest, darkest jungles where nobody has ever been. If they find somebody, they find people uh, that are worshiping something. Why? Because it's in the heart of man to worship. And uh, the, those that worship the true God are, are those that learn the truth about God and who God is. There again, uh, how do these people in the deepest, darkest jungles that have never heard about God, how would they ever come to worship God? By sending missionaries to them from churches such as you and I, people with a burden to get there. See, sometimes we have a hard time seeing uh, why missionaries go to do what they're doing is because they got a burden to go do what they're doing. Uh, this, th these people that uh, uh, that I know that are down in Bolivia, where Brian just went and visited up 13,000 feet up in the air, uh, can't hardly breathe. Why in the world would anyone go there to preach? It's because they need the gospel. I know a fellow that, uh, that spent a lot of times uh, up, in, uh, up in Iceland. He spent about 15 years in Iceland. And it ain't, called, it ain't named Iceland... <laughs> but for a good reason. It's cold up there. And uh, so he spent, I think, 15 years up there. Why would anyone go there? Because he had a burden for those, those Icelanders, for those people that, in Iceland. And uh, you can think of all kinds of, of, of people that go to, to be missionaries to other people, present them the gospel because they're worshiping already. And so it has been in the heart of man since the beginning uh, to worship something. Now, in chapter number 17, the... the the story of Babylon and the story of, of uh, the, the great harlot, all of this takes place in these next two chapters. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to keep you long tonight. I, don't want to give, I, I want to give myself plenty of time to study as we go through this. And there came out, verse number one, and there came out of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying uh, unto me, Come hither. I will show thee unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now we understand uh, the the many waters that the 
the great horse sets upon, the, the many waters, uh, is people, is, is vast numbers of, of people. And, and so verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman. Now, uh, let, me, let me read this verse, and then I'll get back to this. Verse 3. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven hands, a heads, and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and the ten horns. Now, this... This is speaking of the, the last form of Gentile power that is on this earth. And I'm, I'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself. The, so first let's go back to these to the woman that is speaking of here. Now there's two women mentioned. This is where I, this is where I use my other notes here. There is two women that is mentioned in the book of Revelation. Uh, one is righteous. And she's the mother of righteousness, and she is pure. And we see that one in Revelation chapter number 12. Uh, the other is unrighteous, the mother of harlots and of abomination. That is the one which, which we are studying now. One of these is of God, and one of these is of Satan. Now, they ever you remember, whatever God has, the devil has a counterfeit for it. Uh, the, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that is the Trinity. Uh, you know, the, the beast and the false prophet and Satan, that is, or the Antichrist, that is the, the satanic Trinity. So whatever God's got, then the devil has got a counterfeit because he is a master counterfeiter, and he tries to counterfeit the, the things that God does. You remember over in, in the book of Exodus when when. Uh, Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Uh, then, you know, there was things that Moses did that those uh, wise men and those uh, soothsayers of that day would come along and they would do the same things Moses did by the power of Satan. It wasn't by the power of God. God gave Moses power. But Satan also had, you know, had those that, uh, that could do some of the same things that they could do. And so that is just a counterfeit. So remember, God, the devil has a counterfeit for, for those things that God, but it's very weak. And it's not, you know, it's not, uh, uh, you know, it's not something that has much power to it, but he does have a counterfeit. Now, that is, that is the Antichrist. He is the counterfeit of Christ. He's Antichrist, but people are going to look to him when he stands up and when he rises up, people are going to look to him as if he has the answers to all the world's problems. And for the moment, he's going to have. Uh, for the time, he is going to have the answers, and he's going to speak with great swelling words, and he's going to have those answers. So uh, that, being, that being said, the, the woman, in uh, the, one that the, the good woman, the righteous woman, this is the counterfeit that we're fixing to study for this woman. One is righteous, the other is, is the mother of harlots and abomination. One is of God, the other is of, of Satan. And both these women that are mentioned are our mothers. Uh, the first brought forth a son who is to rule all nations. That's the Lord Jesus Christ who came out of the nation of Israel. And that is who, that is who that's the, the mother is here. It's talking about the, uh, the nation of Israel. The second is the mother of harlots. Both women are splendidly dressed, but listen at the difference in the dress. The Bible says they're clothed. The first was wearing heavenly garments clothed with the sun. <coughs> now, I'm slowing down. I about figured out what's got me going this morning and last Sunday. I get started out too quick before my engine has time to warm up. I must be one of them old models that don't have fuel injection. 
And it never happens except in the cold. I don't have this problem in the summertime. It's just in the cold. Well, that's when I used to have trouble with my old cars was when it was cold. And until they get warmed up real good, sometimes they just don't run real well. So I'm going to slow down a second. And you pray about that. I've not had this problem in, in a long time, but the Lord knows, uh, Lord knows what to do. Okay, so uh, these women are, are all splendidly dressed. The first was wearing heavenly garments clothed with the sun. Uh, her clothing is light from heaven. Now, that automatically gives me the, uh, you know, the, the feeling uh, in myself that this is a, a righteous, this is something good, this is something wonderful. But now listen to the second woman's description. She is arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. That all has a sense of worldliness. Now, there's nothing wrong with the colors, and there's nothing wrong with the gold or, or those things, and I'm not, you know, I'm not at all condemning that. But it has, <coughs> in this instant, it has the appearance of worldliness. Her clothes in, are things of the earth, not heavenly things. Now, uh, somebody go out and say, well, preacher, don't think it's right to wear pearls and gold. Well, I'll have to take and throw away my wedding band and... And uh, my wife had to throw away her diamond, her weapon. There ain't no truth to that. You forget that in a minute. Pay too much for that stuff. But, but what it is, is this is a picture of worldliness, of earthliness, something that, that is not of heaven but is of the earth. Now, there's people that are earthly people. And I smell them every day. Every day at work I smell them. They're earthly people. They smell like dirt. And that's, but but th that, that reminds me though, of the way that, that this woman is going to be arrayed. And, I, and I, I begin to make some comparison between people of this day that, that what they're really interested in is the earth. You know who I'm talking about. People, I'm, that's, that's what they're interested in is Mother Earth. You've heard that term. And, and taking care of planet Earth. Well, let me tell you something. God's big enough to take care of what he created. Amen. And so... We have this picture. This woman is, is, a, is, a, is earthly. Now, who is she? Uh, they're both splendidly dressed. The first woman has the moon under her feet. The second woman hath rule over the kings of the earth. Both mothers here suffer. And we read about it in the scripture. The first battle was with the dragon. The first mother battled with the dragon to save her child from being devoured. Remember, we... we uh, we studied that. And uh, the dragon drives her into the wilderness. And then, and then the second woman suffers at the hands of ten kings, of which we will study and which we will learn. These ten kings are ten kings of a, of a uh, ten-nation federation and uh, who probably, probably does exist today and has for some time. Uh, they suffer from the hands of the ten kings who, su who support her, uh, but who uh, now make her desolate, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire, while God in all his power and fury judges her and visits her with plagues, death, and utter destruction. Both women fill a great place in world affairs. One pure, the other a harlot, who hated by earth powers, the other love. One produces masculinity and nobility, the other produces feminine uh, impurity. One is helped by celestial wings, the other is carried by a dragon. You see the comparison here? One is, is absolutely perfect, the other is absolutely wicked. And that's the, that's the two that's the two that we're looking at here tonight. Uh, one has upon her head a, tw a, a crown of twelve stars, the other has upon her head the name of the destroyer and is drunk with the blood of the saints and prophets. One finally takes up her abode in the heavenly city, surrounded by all saints of all ages. The other suddenly goes down to eternal ruin in the hot wrath of, wrath of the Almighty God. Uh, these two women are rivals in every aspect and are just as opposite in character as day and night. The first woman we have already identified, chapter number 12, gives the picture of Israel bringing forth the man child. Now that's the first picture. And then, of course, uh, the one that we're going to study about now. Is, is the one that, that uh, we take up with in chapter number 17. So in, in, in studying this, we know that they are these two women. And we know that one is the, is the mother of, of Harless. Now, 
who is the great harlot? Who is the great whore of the book of Revelation? And the Bible speaks of this, so it is, it is not a particular person, but it is a, 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 uh, an organization, so to speak. And what do they, you know, what, what, do, what does that person do? What has that, has that organization always done down through the ages of time that have, that have helped to, to bring this on, so to speak? Where did it all start? Where did it all happen? Well, this organization of, of authority has been one that has always tried to place emphasis upon what was founded in, in the Tower of Babel, trying their best to be equal with God. Now, this gets kind of scary when you begin to think, I'm no equal with God. You're no equal with God. The church is the child, is, is the bride of the bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what we are as Christians. But how many organizations, how many religions, how many uh, church organizations can you think of that try to build themselves to the level of God where people start out where people start out down here but as they go on through their upbringing in, in uh, religion uh, the, the farther they go and the more they put themselves into that religion then they step up a little bit and they get a little higher can anybody, anybody got an idea here what I'm talking about now these are, these are uh, the, the, the people that are trying, the organization that are trying to make themselves equal with God. Now, what religion, and I'm not, I'm not saying this is it, but what religion do you know of in our society today that has been, been for thousands of years back behind, you know, back in the, in the past, what religious organization do you know about that has that, that, has that theme about them that, that, that what they're doing is producing a hierarchy all the time till they get up to the highest place and they claim to be as high as Christ is. Now that scares you, don't it? That scares me. And it's the Roman Catholic Church. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to say that that's what, that's what that hierarchy is. And you think about it, the, uh, the, the papal authority... Uh, you know, when, when the last pope was chosen, now that, that does interest me somewhat because as I began to see this, how many of the world turned to that man and looked at him like he was as great as God is? Now that's kind of, that's kind of, and most people are afraid to bring that up in the teaching of the word of God is being, because that's always, even among Baptist people, that's always been kind of, kind of ground you didn't tread on was, was accusing, uh, and boy, if this gets out, I'm sure I'll get some emails probably. But, but what else, what other religion do you know of that could be considered uh, one that draws, you know, draws people to worship them and worship their religion rather than worshiping the God of heaven and I know of no other and so as uh, is that the great whore of the book of revelation is that the one that 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 the the kings of the earth will, has or will commit fornications with her so to speak is, is this the one I don't know but I'm telling you I'm not going to say that it is because I'm not definitely sure but I'm going to tell you something it has all if it you know if it if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck and quacks like a duck most time it's a duck but 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 you think if if you can if you can tell me give me a, any other better illustration of a religion or of a a a false uh, counterfeit to the true bride of Christ I don't know what it is and it has existed uh, back through the dark ages did you know that is what was the major persecutor of Christianity in the dark ages was the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, that scares you. Look, just do, do some history study, and you will see that they were the they were the most persecutors of uh, of the Christian people. Then were those of the Roman Catholic Church, and of course, it's been you know it, it, there's been many different names for the for the Catholics, but but that you know you rise from being you know being a, a, a member of the church that goes and talks to somebody that's a little higher than them. 
in a little square box with rabbit wire over the front of it. And you don't know who's back there. You can't see them, and I guess they can see you. I, I think I've got a picture. Well, anyway. And you go in, and you, you talk in that little box. And, it, and it, it's the way it's, that I've been told it's happened. And I've meant to go to one sometime and see. And they say, Father, I have sinned. I don't tell. You know who I tell I've sinned? God in heaven. Right. Now, I don't know who this guy is behind this, in this little box. But he's supposed to be a priest. He's supposed to be higher than I am. My Bible teaches me that we are children of God and that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Some of us may be babies and some of us may be more mature, but we're all on one level with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're saved and we're all his children. Amen. 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 God may have called me to preach, but as far as being a child of God, I'm, you're just as much a child of God as I am. Amen. And so you do that and then that, you know, that, that, that priest, whoever's supposed to be back there, and, uh, you know, he, for so many Hail Marys, I don't understand it all. I need to educate myself a little more. But for so many Hail Marys, you can be cleaned up and ready for the next round. You know, and go back on the next week and do the same thing over and over. Friend, my Bible does not teach that. My Bible don't teach that such as that goes on. But then he can elevate himself a little higher to something or other. Finally gets up to the cardinal. And then if, if he becomes a cardinal, then he finally can get up there and be in line to be chosen the pope. And they vote on him like a president or something or other. Oh, God just don't work like it. I'm, I'm sorry, that is not in my book. You find that kind of, you find nothing in, the, in my Bible that teaches any such thing in the Word of God. You find it, you show it to me. If you can find it, I believe it. If it's in the Word of God, I believe it. But I don't, I'll, you know, I, that is all entirely a system of works. What happened at the Tower of Babel? They had a system of works in which they would build that city to, to build that tower and build that tower up to the city of God up to his level. So this is the Babylon uh, the Bible is speaking about here. And that whole system uh, it, it becomes wh whatever that is, whether it's the Roman Catholic Church, which I'm in trouble for now, but they let it go, amen. Doesn't matter, I, I still believe it. And, and whether or not that's it or it's something else, uh, then that is what is going to be destroyed. That's what is going to be uh, uh, tore down is that is that religious system that religious organization that is that is not going to stand so that is however that takes place it's that religious system that is talking about here when it talks about the fall of Babylon that uh, you know that religious system now there's also a ten uh, uh, a ten nation federation of uh, uh, you know, of, of leaders, of men uh, that are going to rise up also, and those things will take place just as the, uh, that's, that takes up in verse number 8, those things take place just after the tribulation takes place. Now, I believe they're already in, or after the rapture takes place, I believe they're already in place. And I believe just in, and I don't know all those nations. We will try to learn them. But I believe that those, those European powers, those European nations, just after, the rapture takes place, these will rise up with a leader and these will rise up to, you know, to rule the world and to, and to, with one monetary government, one monetary money system. And I'm hearing more about that all the time. And how, you know, it, it gets, you know, you, you dig a little bit and you search a little bit about a one, one, uh, one global currency. Look, at, look that up, search that out a little bit. And a one world government, search that out a little bit. And friend, this world is headed exactly that way. But as surely as it comes to pass, and as surely as the church is raptured out, and as surely as, as Babylon has risen up, it will be crushed and it will be destroyed. And that religious system, that religious organization uh, the, that has gone on uh, through, through time will be destroyed and will be cast down. And that's going to happen. Just you know, as sure as I stand here, that's going to happen. Babylon is fallen. So uh, we see that that as uh, as we as believers, we know the truth, and we know that we are saved by God's grace. We know that we are of the family of God. Listen, we're all you know we we consider ourselves Baptists here tonight, 
And I'm, I'm of the opinion that the Baptists, in Baptist hit my study of Baptist history, they go back all the way back to the time of Christ. And some people even dare say that they come back to John D. Baptist as being the first Baptist, which he was. But, but I know where my roots are. I know where my roots are founded. And everybody that's born, been born again are, is in that same family. Every child of God, whether they be Baptist or whoever they may be, they go back to those same roots. But those that, that, that go contrary to the Word of God and the teachings of the Word of God and the, and the teachings of the, the, uh, the principles of salvation, those that go beyond that are of an entirely different sect of, you know, sect of religion. It's not, even, it's not even close to what is true. But that is what the devil's counterfeit for true Christianity, for, tr for true salvation. There is a counterfeit there. And friend, it scares me. To, and I, I've, got some, I've got some good friends that are of other religions and, and people that, you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure in every religion there's probably some truly born again people uh, that some of them darken and some of them uh, without any light and just don't know any better. And I'm sure there are. But those that follow after that blindly and suppose that when they're all said and done uh, that they can get to God through that are so, so very much deceived and it's spreading across the world it's you know it's spreading around the world and across the world and friend it, it is a dangerous thing it is a dangerous organization so stay with the lord stay by the stuff and and and, and remember that all this religious mess one day god will straighten out and it will all be cast down and destroyed but true believers We'll go on to be with the Lord and serve with him through eternity. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God tonight. God, please help us to rightly divide the word of truth, Lord, and uh, say only those things that will be pleasing in thy sight. And God, should we make a mistake, God, I pray, Lord, that we would, uh, Lord, quickly correct those things. But God, help us to be led by the Spirit of God, for you make no mistakes. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.